Hey, Life Group Leaders. Uh, this is Jason. I wanted to say thank you for what you do in helping to lead our groups. Um, over the next few weeks, one of the things that I feel uh, I need to do better at is helping to coach and lead uh, in all of our groups. And so this is the first of what I hope will be many Monday morning kind of coaching sessions, uh, looking back to what God did yesterday on Sunday uh, and how we can uh, live that out, play that out through our life groups in the week. Um, and it became especially poignant yesterday as we were, uh, the, the message yesterday and what God did was just unbelievable. Uh, as you, If you were here, you know, we talked about confession and what God did through that and the conversations that I had after service and that I've already had today and have scheduled for the next couple of days. Um, it was just a reminder to me of just how much people want and need um, someone to help them learn to be obedient to God's word. That we're not just going to talk about it, but we're going to actually do it and have the expectation that that somebody's going to lean in us to help us do it. And that's exactly what our life groups are all about. And so the role that you play in seeing our church make disciples is unprecedented. Uh, you are on the front lines. Uh, I can't take all of those calls, and, and our staff can't take all of those calls, and our elders can't take all of those calls. But but each of us in our life groups, as we pour ourselves into each other, um, that's the way the body of Christ gets built up. So uh, so let me just say thank you first uh, as we begin. I want to just give you a couple of thoughts. You know, I've got my little trusty sheet here that I print out, and I give it to you guys um, each and every week. And just wanted to share just a couple of thoughts as you're thinking about your group this week and prepping for that. Uh, Obviously, this week we're talking about confession, 1 John chapter 1. Um, and I began with a couple of discussion questions, and, and I just want to help you to understand what I'm thinking when, when I write these discussion questions. These are simply questions to help people get uh, started talking. That's the whole point. And uh, we try to point them into a direction that it kind of le helps us lean into and think about uh, the, the, the discussion that's going to come later. But this is the... Uh, most basic, just trying to get people to talk, to share stories. You know, discipleship, as we shared a couple of weeks ago, discipleship only happens in relationships. And so we need to know people. We want to know people. We want to get connected to people. And so um, so that's why I wrote just a simple question like, where's the darkest place you've ever been? You know, for me, I can't wait to get to share the story of when I took some kids spelunking in a cave in Missouri in a mud-ridden it was so dark. We all turned off our lights, and I could not see my hand in front of my face. It was so dark. It, but it's just an excuse for me to be able to share a story uh, so people get to know me, uh, to have a few laughs. Uh, it's going to be great. I can't wait to share that. So as we're thinking about these discussion questions, these aren't overly spiritual. We're, the way we begin this conversation is we begin uh, at the shallowest point, and we go to the deepest point by the time we get done with this. That's, that's the hope. Um, with these uh, life group uh, curriculum that we're using. So uh, just think about some questions that may that, that two may have. What does it look like to, uh, what's the brightest place you've ever been? I don't know, but thinking about the whole idea of light and dark, uh, what are some questions that you might be able to ask just to tell some stories, just to get to know people, to share some laughs? Uh, that's what the discussion questions are all about. Uh, and then obviously we go into the observation sections where we look at God's word and we observe it. We say, what does this teach us? What does it say to us? Um, with, the, with the ultimate goal of how do we obey this? And so that's where we're going to go. But in the observation questions, you notice that most of the, the questions are third person. What would other people think? What do you think he means? It's not personal yet. We're not driving into a person's heart. We're just trying to observe what, what is he trying to teach what is he saying? How have you seen this played out in other people's lives? Um, and I want to point to one in specific. When we get to 1 John 1, 7, it says um, that we need to walk in the light. And I ask the question, what does it mean to walk in the light? Does that mean that we need to be perfect? And I want you to understand this. this is, that's not what walking in the light means. Walking in the light is simply uh, that we don't have anything to hide. That we're not ha trying to conceal anything. Uh, walking in darkness is having unrepentant, unconfessed, habitual sin. 
And walking in the light doesn't mean that I don't have any sin. It just means that I know where I have sin, that I have people that I'm confessing my sin to. And, and so that's the big deal. So it's not about being perfect. Walking in the light is not about being perfect, but walking in the light is about I don't have anything to hide. And so as you're sharing those kind of principles with your, with your group, I want you to lean into that. And none of us are perfect. We get that. We're not trying to proclaim that. We'll talk actually a little bit more about what that looks like next week as it relates to holiness and our sin. But walking in the darkness is when I'm trying to hide my sin, conceal my sin, that's walking in the darkness. And walking in the light is where I have nothing to hide. And so as you're leaning into your group, as you're leading your group, uh, I think that'd be an important aspect to point out this week uh, about what it means to walk in the light. Um, and then I want to drop down to 1 John 1, nine there where we talks about um, the way that we get out of the darkness and into the light is through our confession, and I, and I ask this question, what is your gut level response when you think about confessing your sin? Because most of us, it's fear, it's anxiety, we, we tense up and we have that voice in us that tells us, don't do it, don't do it, they're going to they're gonna shame you, they're going to think less of you, and honestly, there may be people who do that, and we can't change that, but I, I want you to begin asking your group, what was your response when Christy confessed her sin? I think that would be really, really important to, to ask them. As you heard Christy, for those of you who are here, as you heard Christy Chatham share her story about her own uh, sin as it related to her drinking, what was your response? How did you feel when she sat up here and in front of everyone confessed her sin and her struggle? And then how does that affect? If, 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 if that's the way we thought of her when she confessed her sin, why would that not apply to me? And so I want you to lean into your group and say, what did that do for you? What did that teach you? How do you feel about her? What did you think about her when she did that? And then allow that to permeate our soul to say, if that's how we felt when she confessed hers, then why would I not think that other God-fearing, Bible-believing, Jesus-loving people wouldn't have that same reaction when I try to confess my sin? And so I think that'd be really important um, for your group, or could be. Uh, let me drop down to the last part. The last part is application, and again, this is really, really important because uh, as we shared a few weeks ago in Matthew 28, we don't just teach for the sake of knowledge, but, but his call for us is to make disciples, teaching them to obey everything that I have commanded you. That's why we do what we do. And the people in your group, because I know your heart and your stomach is probably like mine, you're thinking, do people really want to do this? Here's what we've said as a church. This is the place where we practice what we preach. When we get into these life groups, this is the place you're going to be loved for, cared for, and missed, and known. These are the places where we're going to do these things. And so if you have people who are showing up to your group, there is at least part of them that has the expectation that this is where those things are going to happen. And so as fearful it is, as uncomfortable as it may be, don't punt this most important aspect of our life groups, of where we're getting real with our lives and being honest with the people around us and living out what Jesus has called us to do in community. All of those one another passages in scripture, we say as a church, we're going to do these in our life group. We're going to love one another. We're going to care for one another. We're going to hold each other accountable. Those things are going to happen in our groups. We say that. And those people who heard that signed up to be a part of your group and so I'm asking you, please don't make me out to be a liar. Let's do what we say we're going to do in living out the commands of Jesus. But here's what I want to say as it relates to this idea of confession. Um, because there, I, I read a whole list yesterday of all sorts, whether it was divorce or pornography or alcohol. Do you hit? Are you jealous? Are you angry? Do you steal? And I gave this huge list of, of these big things. Have you survived an affair or... Uh, an abortion, and we just had these huge things that kind of came up uh, in the message. But here's what I want to say to you. As you're going through this and, and, and living this out in your group, don't feel like you have to point into just those big things, okay? Because there's some, some people in your group, and their life is okay, and they don't have those huge, huge issues. And so there's something in them that says, well, I don't have those big things. I don't need to worry about it. But that's not true. Okay? We need to confess everything. 
And so maybe in your group, a person doesn't need to confess something big. Maybe they need to confess something little. Maybe they need to confess that I got angry with my wife a couple of nights ago, that I yelled at my kids for something stupid. Maybe they need to confess um, that they're habitually late for work and they're taking advantage of their boss. Who knows what it is, but they have something. And so don't allow someone just to escape this idea of confession because they don't have something huge they need to confess. So what we need to do is we begin confessing the little things, all right? whatever that little thing is. And we need to confess the little things. And we practice this idea of confession. And we practice in the little things so that when that big thing comes, we know what to do. And so that's what I want to lean into you to say, don't punt this idea in your life group. Don't let it get scraped by. Maybe it's not something you want to do with the whole group, but maybe you split off into pairs, um, you know, men with men, women with women, and you let them have a time of confession and prayer um, together. But let's take this promise of James seriously. Let's take James 5.16 and say we believe God for this, that when we confess and renounce our sin, that's when we find healing. Don't deprive your people of a chance to be healed from what God's doing in them um, through his spirit to convict them of their sin. Um, and let us come alongside and, and lift them up and pray for them um, to experience what God has for them. That's it. Sorry, went a little longer than I'd hoped to, but I want to lean in, just share a little bit, a couple of thoughts as you're preparing for your group this week. Uh, I'm praying for you. I'm praying that God uses this. Uh, again, from the conversations that I've had over the last couple of days, this is going to be a powerful week where people get set free and experience healing. And I'm so glad that you are helping us to accomplish what it means to make disciples starting in Prescott. Love you guys. We'll see you soon.